Good day, everyone, and once again, we are back together, your favorite uncle uh, on dial. And um, of course, I know that you are busy preparing for those prelims. Um, you know, just make sure that, uh, you know, you continue to work as hard as you can. And of course, if you are new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed, please just hit that subscribe button. We are fast tracking towards that 100,000 mark. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that we are growing at an alarming rate, uh, but as well that we are giving quality content. So if you want to get in touch with us, all our um, uh, information will be in the description box and you can do that. And by the way, you can also just bless your favorite uncle with a super thanks. All right. So there's a, a button uh, just down below where you can just give a super thanks. All right. Now let's get into the question. Right. So they say to us, we've got lines. Uh, y is equals to x plus 1 and y is equals to minus x minus 7 and that are x's of symmetry of the function um, as uh, described f of x, right? Now, please remember, this is obviously a hyperbola, right? So what does that say to us? It, we know that at the x's of symmetry, um, you know, or rather the intersection of your x's of symmetry, this is where you would also find your asymptotes, right? So in this case, what are we going to do? They said, first of all, show that P is equals to 4 and Q is equals to 3. So essentially, they're saying uh, identify your asymptote. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we know we've got Y is equals to X plus 1. Okay, uh, this is our equation 1. And we also have Y is equals to negative X minus 7. Let's call this equation 2. But we know in this case, it means that equation 1 should be equal to equation 2 uh, because this is where they meet. So in this case, I'm going to say x plus 1 is equal to negative x minus 7. Okay, and let's try to simplify. If I take the negative x to the other side, it becomes positive. So I'll have x plus x on the one side. And on the other side, I'm going to take the 1 and put it to on the other side. I'll have negative 7 minus 1. So I'll have 2x is minus 8 okay so of course we're going to divide both sides by 2 and in this case it means that x is equal to negative 4 right now i want you to keep in mind in this case the x value of, of your asymptote you know always changes sign when you put it in the equation so what that uh, actually tells us is that our p value or our asymptote in this case would be x is equal to negative 4 However, when we replace it into the formula, uh, we say P is equals to a positive 4. Uh, the Q value retains its value. So how are we going to get the Q value? We're going to now substitute the value for X is equals to negative 4 into any of the two equations. So now I'm going to say, well, we had an equation Y. Let's substitute uh, X is equals to negative 4 into equation 1. And remember, equation 1 was x, y is equals to x plus 1. So I'm going to have minus 4. I'm substituting for x there, uh, plus 1. Uh, so that will give us negative 3. And in this case, um, that's it. So therefore, it means that your f of x value, that will be negative 2 over uh, x plus 4 minus 3. So that is what your function would look like. Okay. Now, please remember that your x value of your asymptotes uh, always changes sign um, once you um, uh, obviously put it in the um, in your axes. Okay. Right. Now, they say calculate the x-intercept of f. Now, in this case, all right. So what we're going to do is we know that at the x-intercept, uh, at the x-intercept, we know that y is equal to 0, okay? So now what this means is we're going to take our, um, our equation. So it means that I'm going to say minus 2 over x plus 4 and minus 3 is equal to 0. And we try to solve for x. So that's negative 2 over x plus 4 is equal to, if I take 3 to the other side, it becomes positive. So now... Um, I will cross multiply. So 3 is the same as, that's the same as 3 over 1. So if we cross multiply there, negative 2 times 1 will give us negative 2. 
okay? And on the other side, we've got 3 times uh, x plus 4, okay? So obviously, we are going to simplify. Uh, so 3x plus uh, 12 is equal to negative 2. Okay, so 3x is equal to, so if I take the 12 to the other side, uh, it becomes negative 14. Okay, negative 12 minus 2 will give us negative 14. And if we divide both sides by 3, okay, so x will be equal to minus 14 over 3. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to leave it in that uh, format. So that's minus 14 over 3. Okay, right. Um, in this case, so that's our x-intercept, okay? Calculate the x-intercept of f, so that is our x-intercept. So now, they're saying to us, um, sketch the graph of, um, of f and clearly label all, intercept, uh, all intercepts rather uh, with the x's um, and the asymptotes, okay? Right, so now we want to draw the graph, Okay, so um, I hope you don't mind. I'm not really going to make a, a, a perfect sketch, right? So in this case, so let's try and just make our axes very nice. Okay, so um, there we are. So what we're going to do, these are our y axes and these are x axes. Now remember, in this case, we know that we have our asymptotes and our asymptotes um, are negative 4 and negative 3. So that means that if we're going to have our asymptotes, they're going to be at negative 4, um, or rather our x asymptote is x is equal to negative 4, right? So that would be um, x is equal to negative 4. Okay, I'm just trying to draw it in a dotted line format, and maybe let me just change color with that. Okay, so x is equal to negative 4. This would be the asymptote over here. Okay, suppose this is going to be negative 4. And then our y asymptote would be uh, y is equal to negative 3. So let's just put it over there. Okay, now I also want us to note there. Um, in this case, our a value was negative. Now, please note. When our a value is negative, what it means is that um, our graphs will be in the second and the fourth quadrant, okay? Uh, remember, if your a value is positive, then it would have been in the first and the third quadrant. So what we also need to do here um, uh, would be to uh, obviously get, we, we found the value of, the, uh, of our x-intercept, uh, but if we want to find the value of your y-intercept, okay, I didn't do that. Can I do that in this, in the yellow here? We know the y-intercept, okay, we, this is where x is equal to 0. So we're going to say f of 0 is negative 2 uh, over 0 plus 4, right, minus 3. So what we have there, negative 2 over 4, that's minus 1 over 2, uh, minus 3. So this will give us minus 3 and a half, okay? Uh, so this will be um, minus 3 and 1 over 2, if you want to, uh, you can just uh, say that's minus 7 over 2, okay? So it means that our y-intercept would be at 0 and negative 7 over 2, uh, whereas our x-intercept would be at 14 over 3. Um, this is the same as uh, just saying, uh, so 14 over 3, I think, uh, to just round it off there, uh, um, that would be, uh, right, in fact, let me just draw it as uh, 14 over 3. So we said our graph is going to be at the x-intercept um, and uh, at the, sorry, at the third and the fourth quadrant, okay? So we know that we would have um, a graph that would touch, right, so that would be in the second quadrant, Okay, so there's our graph there. Okay, so that means that's going to be our x-intercept there, which is uh, 14 uh, minus 14 over 3, over 3. 
and then you're also going to have your other graph which is over there okay uh, sorry for just squeezing it in there so it means this is our y intercept we said our y intercept is minus 7 over 2 okay so this is what your graph would uh, somewhat look like okay so that would be the point 0 and negative 7 over 2 and that would be minus 14 over 3 as well as 0 all right so this is what our graph would eventually look like okay right and of course our intercepts at minus okay i didn't show that that is negative three there okay uh, and of course you are uh, um you're supposed to show all your asymptotes right and that is how the cookie crumbles all right i hope that this has been helpful as per usual of course uh, your favorite uncle will be coming with some more past exam questions Please just keep looking out. And by the way, I will be covering stats um, uh, in the near future. I know many of you have been uh, inquiring about it. So I will be covering that uh, as well as uh, the fundamental counting principles. Otherwise, from your favorite uncle, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.